Hello everyone, I'm Sahil and welcome back to the channel. It's really been a long time. I guess I've not made a video for past two or three weeks. I was just busy with exams and stuff uh, and just glad that it's over uh, for now at least. And uh, yeah, uh, but I've also been working on something really good for you guys. Uh, as you guys already can see from the title, it's my second company analysis. And this time around, I have one of the latest additions to my portfolio, the Ping An Group. Uh, Pingan is a really massive conglomerate, so it has been a big one for me to compress and deliver to you guys. I might skip some of the details in the video, like I can't practically fit everything, right? But if at any point you guys find anything useful to you guys, uh, then just help me by hitting the like button. You guys can also subscribe if you want to. I don't mind. I really don't. So in this video, I'm firstly going to introduce the company to you guys and also the business overview. Then we'll look at uh, the company's financial performance in the past five years. And then uh, we'll look at some of the competitors as well. Moving on, uh, we'll go into my investment thesis into the company. And then, uh, yeah, lastly, we'll look at the valuation of the company. So, yeah, let's hit it up. Pinghan, which directly translates into safe and well, is a Chinese holding conglomerate like I mentioned and it mainly deals in the financial sector. It was founded in 1988 and is headquartered in Shenzhen. The stock trades in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange uh, with a ticker symbol of 2318 and in Shanghai Stock Exchange with a ticker of 601318 and the US OCT market with a ticker symbol of PNGAY. Since 1988, Pinghan has grown to become the top insurance company, not just in China, but the entire world. They're also ranked 10th in the Forbes Global 2000 list. But that's all the boring stuff and not the reason that I invested into them. The reason I got into them, like I mentioned in my previous video, is because of their ability to uh, develop this ecosystem, a digital ecosystem in the financial service sector. Look in the realms of high technology, whose tentacle reach into every aspect of the Chinese commerce and eventually end up in the phones of every Chinese consumer. This is where everything is happening now and is gonna happen in the future. And Pingan is able to establish itself pretty well in this space. Let's take a quick look back and figure out how this came to be. The company's progress can be divided into three phases. Firstly, establishment of solid base. Secondly, transformation with technology. And uh, thirdly, interconnecting all the businesses. Pingan from the very start established itself in the insurance, banking, and the asset management businesses. In this phase of the company's development, their main focus was to build a set of platforms covering the entire spectrum of uh, financial services in China. Now that has been an amazing strategy. Since the financial sector in China is heavily regulated and government dominated, uh, things that might be easy to do in the other parts of the world, for example, asset management, requires a whole lot of licenses to be able to do in China. So very early in the game, Pingan's founder and the current chairman aggressively went after license optionality. And now Pingan is the largest and the only non-government controlled player uh, with the full suit of financial services in China. The second phase into the company's development was uh, to transform itself with technology. And they were really the pioneers into this direction while the financial sector as a whole remained reluctant to change and eventually got disrupted by startups. Pingan started to revolutionize itself with cloud services and then started investing heavily into AI. Since 2010, they have been investing 8-10% to of their previous year's net profit into tech R&D. Over the years, they have used this enormous budget to develop many in-house technologies to move their businesses online while tackling issues such as identity theft. They also have this very interesting uh, facial expression recognition tech which can tell if a person, a loan applicant, is lying about his financial position. And this is a great issue in China because of limited uh, credit history. So they have used this technology and it has really made them a market leader with the least non-performing loan ratio. So on the one side, we have Tencent and, uh, and financials who are from the tech base and trying to enter the financial sector. And on the other, we have Pingan, which has a solid financial base and they are trying to transform themselves with technology. This is very interesting to see and a bit later, I will try to share with you guys why I believe that Pingan has an upper hand over Tencent and uh, and financials, at least in the finance world. But let's move on to the third phase real quick. And in the third phase of the company's development, uh, their focus was to use the technology to interconnect all their various traditional businesses. And uh, with all this tech transformation, 
uh, they are moving into a data driven company and with uh, the huge company they have they really have a whole lot of data and it's uh, it's quality data because of the nature of the business that they conduct financial business right so you need all the financial details of the customers and they are willing to give you those financial details driven by this right they are able to build a ecosystem with an amazing thing called cross selling and uh, this has not only changed their business model but they have also uh, like created more out of them and uh, this brings me to the business overview where i will share some of this business ventures that they have created so in terms of their businesses they can be split up into four different segments the first three are their core businesses which is the insurance banking and asset management and the last one the fourth one is the technology segment which is mainly a supporting arm for all this uh, three uh, core businesses and like it really brings the entire company together so for the insurance business right they are mainly insurance company and it represents 80% of their revenue and 76.6% of their net profits uh in the year of 2020 it further can be split up into three parts which is the life and health insurance business property and casualty insurance and then insurance funds the second one is the banking segment and pingan group owns uh, 59% of the publicly listed uh pingan bank uh it makes about 14.5% of pingan group's revenue and 11.7% of their net profit thirdly they have the asset management business which covers anything from brokerage business to trust and makes up about 6% of their revenue and 7.8% of their profit lastly the segment which uh, i mentioned is supporting all three different uh, businesses so they represent uh, 2.6% of their revenue and 5.5% of their net profit but these numbers are really not accurate in uh, telling us how important technology is for pingan because they're not using uh, technology to generate income or net profits as much they are using it to channel these uh, technology users their digital ecosystem users to buy their insurances or their credit cards and uh, like to support their other businesses so yeah uh, technology does like you know I, i will talk about it later on how it affects the other businesses so yeah it's really really important for pingan right now and they really are using it pretty well But anyways right their core technology can also be split into two parts the financial technologies and healthcare technologies and i will uh, talk about a few of them uh, so one thing about pingan is that they will nurture a certain business right and then they will spin it off and uh, list it into uh, like publicly list them and uh, still have a controlling position in these companies so for the financial sector they have uh, uh, the lufax one connect and uh, pingan financial cloud Lufax is an online financial marketplace which connects insurers and uh, lenders to the uh, customers and you can really see how it connects to their banking and insurance business and the awesome part is that they are able to collect uh, data on uh, the end the other competitors who like who are listing their products on their platform and able to see how their products are doing as compared to them and how they can improve on that which is amazing right data again data di- driven company right there and uh, Lufax is also listed in the uh, US Uh, and Pingan owns 39 39% of the company yeah one connect on the other side uh, compiles all the various technologies that Pingan has already developed uh, for its own transformation and offers it as a enterprise software service to small and medium sized financial companies uh, in locally and also recently internationally uh, with the uh, NTUC income in Singapore being one of their clients One Connect is also listed in US and Pingan owns 34.3% of that company. Thirdly, we have Pingan Fin Cloud which is the largest cloud platform in the financial industry not just in China but the entire world and this uh, support mass storage, high concurrency computing and uh, application development in uh, minutes. Whatever that means I also don't know. And yeah, so they support the uh, healthcare and uh, financial industries with their credit cloud, asset cloud to insurance cloud um healthcare cloud or in uh sales cloud all all, all sort of things like you know I I don't want to go very in depth into these things uh let's move on to the health tech uh, they have so firstly uh, they have is the pingan good doctor pingan good doctor is the largest telemedicine platform in the world which offers online medical services on your mobile device such as online consultation hospital referrals appointments inpatient arrangements and so on They are rapidly expanding into Southeast Asia in collaboration with Grab and other platforms. 
Uh, on a side note, Pingan is also invested into Grab, uh, which is like uh, the Uber of Southeast Asia. And uh, Good Doctor itself is listed on Hong Kong Stock Exchange with a ticker of 1833. Uh, Pingan it's, owns 38.44% of, uh, of the company right now. Secondly, we have Health Connect, which provides a range of services uh, ranging from anti-fraud and overbilling controls to support the uh, state health insurance system, which is like the local governments. Uh, and they cover 50% of all medical expenditure in China. Thirdly, we have Ask Bob Doctor, uh, which is a deep learning based diagnosis and treatment assistant tool. Uh, it looks at scans and provides a diagnosis to the doctor to confirm. I know it sounds like a bit of a gimmick, but uh, Ask Bob Doctor has really demonstrated that its AI capabilities are comparable to human doctors, if not better. It scored 97.7 points compared to 93.9 points for a team of doctors at a competition organized by these fellas. And uh, yeah, in addition, uh, human doctors took like 10 to 15 minutes to diagnose each case, whereas Ask Bob did it in a few, a few seconds. Okay, and then we have these other uh, techs that they also have. Uh, one is like the auto tech, the auto home. Uh, Auto Home is the biggest online marketplace for uh, vehicles in China, according to the company. And it has like 80% of all the auto related online traffic in China. Uh, they offer uh, dealer comparison, model comparison, auto articles, servicing and repair. And Pingan owns 49.32% of this company. That's really a long list of businesses, but uh, putting it all together, Pingan is a $1.4 trillion balance sheet company with 218 million uh, retail users with over 600 million uh, users on their broader digital ecosystem. In uh, 2020, they made uh, $204 billion USD in revenue uh, and a net income of uh, $22 billion USD with $13.64 billion in free cash flow. That's fucking awesome. In the past five years, the revenue has increased about 70% and uh, the net profit an amazing 143%. The net margins are improving as well and it has entered the double digit since 2019. This can only be attributed to their transformation to tech, which saves a lot of uh, operative cost. In terms of dividend, it currently stands at 2.8% dividend yield uh, with a payout ratio of uh, 30%, which is actually quite good. And uh, they have a long track record of dividend payouts. Plus, uh, the amazing thing is that they have increased the dividend by three times in the past five years. Like, that's awesome. Imagine having a pay increment of 3x uh, in five years. They have a juicy 20% return on equity, which is really on the higher side. Uh, it usually ranges about 10 to 12% for uh, insurance company, a good insurance company. Also, Pinghan has about 25%, a dominant 25% uh, share in the China's 3 trillion yuan uh, insurance premiums market. For the comparables, I have China Life and People's Insurance, which is uh, the local traditional competitors to Pingan in the insurance business. And then we have UNH, uh, Prudential, AIA, which you would be quite familiar with. Uh, but one thing to note is UNH does not operate in China. I just have it for comparison purposes. And then we have Jong'an, uh, which is an online only insurance company in China. And I believe you should really go and check them out before you decide to invest in Lemonade because seriously, they have way more opportunities in them and they are way better than them. Uh, it is actually owned by all three giants in China, Tencent uh, and Financial and Ping'an itself. Uh, and Financial owns the majority stake with 13% uh, and uh, Tencent and Ping'an owns 10, over 10% 10 each. Lemonade does not even come close to the potential Jong'an has really. Like all the data that all these three companies can feed into them is just mind blowing. Anyways, with all that covered, uh, let's look into the investment thesis I have for uh, Pingan Group. I have three this time actually. Firstly, it's uh, my belief that there will be a capital transfer from the West to East and the other cap uh, catalysts along with that. Secondly, uh, I think the ecosystem they are building uh, in the financial sector is just amazing. Thirdly, they remain undisputed in the businesses that they operate in China. So let's start with the first thesis and I'll quickly cover it because I've really talked a lot about my thesis on uh, the wealth transfer uh, from uh, West to East and uh, China's uh, overall potential as a world power. It already is a world power actually. Uh, but on top of that, they are pushing for a consumer driven economy instead of export economy, which uh, will bring growth to the country itself. And uh, yeah, so with all the capital influx and growth, there will be a rise of risk. And as a risk increases, uh, there's more demand for insurance coverage. 
On the other side, as the wealth increases, there is again more demand for insurance and the various products and uh, I mean investment products that they offer. The, uh, the current market penetration for insurance is also quite low in China as uh, compared to the neighboring developed, more developed countries such as uh, Japan and Korea. Uh, for the second thesis, uh, I, I really bought uh, this stock solely based on this thesis and this is my main one. Uh, I am really impressed by the ecosystem they are building. I strongly believe in it, but just to give you a glimpse, uh, for the healthcare space, they have the good doctor to provide a primary consultation service and booking of uh, specialist appointments uh, with features like uh, medicine delivery to their doorstep uh, and all this stuff. So it's a great platform and there's a solid uh, adoption from the population as well. Uh, at the same time, the government is also pushing this uh, to the uh, to the population because within China itself, right, the healthcare system is exhausted. The sheer population is huge and uh, they cannot uh, work in the same manner that the Western countries do. They cannot open hospitals everywhere. So this really lowers down the burden on the Chinese healthcare system. And the good thing is, actually just imagine for yourself like how easy it is for them to promote their healthcare insurance through this app. like. People are already there and they would need a healthcare coverage, so why not, right? And on top of that, they are able to collect data on uh, people like what kind of sickness they have, what are their diagnoses, what kind of medicine they are taking. And through this, they are able to adjust the premium uh, according to the risk that they might think they have. And this is all real time data. So, again, data driven company. As a second example, I have the auto ecosystem. So, as I mentioned, uh, they have uh, Auto Homes, right, which is the market leader in terms of the online traffic. So anybody searching for a car or comparing a dealer and whatever they are doing related to car, they are planning to buy a vehicle, right? So if they are planning to buy a vehicle, they are looking for financing as well. They would need financing actually. So Pingan Bank is there to offer its services. At the same time, they are also able to offer other products like upsell other products. So in 2019, uh, uh, Pingan Bank sold 5,000 credit cards per day on Auto Home. Uh, which is actually more than what Citibank did in the entire of Asia per day in that same year. So really like they are achieving something really great over here. So yeah, a car buyer would also need a auto insurance from day one. So yeah, they have their insurance company to help them out. It's not just about uh, selling and upselling, it's also about retaining the customers. And the way you can do it is by improving the customer service, the customer experience and having the best one out there in the market. So uh, the way Pingan is uh, doing it is by uh, introducing tech into everything, really. So for the auto claims, right, what the customer needs to do is just take pictures of the damaged part of the vehicle and the AI has all the data to calculate how much does the damage cost for all the vehicles in their data, uh, data system. So yeah, it will in minutes give you a quote. Uh, you, the customer can either take the cash money, it will be transferred to their account or they can uh, choose to, if they are not happy, right, they think that it may it might cost more than that. They can just choose to go the traditional way of going through the uh, approved repair shop and stuff. So yeah, about 40% uh, of the customers choose uh, the cash payout upfront, which is really fast for them. And it also truncates a lot of time and cost for the company. With such a heavy integration, right, and with a good customer service, they're able to cross-sell to the customers and they, they are able to upsell. So if one customer owns a auto insurance, they are able to sell them a life insurance as well because he knows like how good the, the service is and how beneficial it is. So yeah, uh, and I think they are doing pretty well in this uh, segment. In the past five years, their online user base has increased about 73% and their retail customers uh, customer base has increased 67%. Uh, within this increase in uh, 2020, right, 37 were sourced from their online user base. So like random people are just exploring their uh, their articles on uh, on Auto Home are actually becoming their customers. So this is really working. 37% of their new customers were from their online user base. Even then, only 200 million of their uh, current retail customers are online users. So there's always uh, there's this potential for them to gain more. Uh, customers from their online user base. Now, how can we figure out if the cross-selling is working? The way we do it is this uh, number that the uh, the company provides, which is number of contracts per customer. And it currently stands at 2.76. It has been increasing for the past few years, which is 
the sign that it's actually working. If I have to compare it with something, right, I will compare it with Apple. Uh, the amazing thing about Apple is that they're able to hook a customer with one product, let's say iPhone, and then able to sell other products to them uh, in in over the years, right? It's like me, I bought Apple at first for a couple of years. Uh, then I now have an iPad and I have a MacBook. So yeah, this is how uh, Pingan is doing it as well in the financial ecosystem. Apple has uh, 2.6 products per customer in America, which is actually lower than uh, the numbers Pingan has. So really, Pingan is doing great in this side. Other than their retail customers, they also have corporate clients and they have also shown to benefit from this cross-selling. Uh, the written premium for the corporate channel achieved through cross-selling increased 84.4% year on year. Then there is also OneConnect, uh, which not only serves as a technology platform, but also integrates all the members' accounts, saving IT, marketing costs, as well as all the other expenses. So yeah, win-win everywhere. Let's move on to my third thesis, uh, which states that uh, Pingan remains undisputed within the businesses they operate in. Like I mentioned before, right, Pingan is the only non-governmental uh, organization that has the full suit of financial licenses. And uh, this is really a big mode for the company. Even tech companies uh, such as uh, Ant Financials and Tencent, right, have been uh, growing exponentially uh, without facing any regulations. But uh, they have recently come into scrutiny with Ant Financials already uh, ordered to restructure as a financial company. Now, this is really important uh, to prevent any meltdown like what happened in uh, 07 in US. The upper hand that these tech companies have is really their data. Both uh, Ant Financials and uh, Tencent track their user base and sees their spending habit and what they are buying to offer them financial products and also to adjust uh, their interest rate for uh, their, their financing to them. WeChat Pay and Alipay have 1.2 and 1.3 billion uh, users each respectively. Uh, this is higher than the 900 million uh, indirect and 598 direct users that Pinghan has but what Pinghan has an advantage in is the quality of the data uh, and the depth of the data. On top of that I believe that ERMB which is China's own digital sovereign currency uh, which is currently being tested is gonna be really a challenge for Alipay and WeChat Pay as an everyday payment method. Currently, all the merchants have to be exclusive to either one of the payment methods. But when uh, the ERMB is rolled out, it will be required by law to be uh, to be accepted by all the merchants. And uh, the good thing is that ERMB can be used when uh, the device is offline, whereas Alipay and WeChat Pay can't be used. So as a dude, uh, when you have something that can be used everywhere and in any time and any circumstance, uh, Eventually, it will just become a habit to go for that instead of uh, other two apps. Uh, like, you know, you, have, you're, you would have to check with the, uh, the merchant, right? Hey, are you able to accept WeChat? And uh, only then you'll go. And it's, it's, a, it's a process, it's a hindrance. So when you know that it has to be like ERMB has to be accepted by the merchant. So you'll just straight away pop up your phone and you'll open the ERMB, ERMB app instead. So in the end, I believe like Ant Financials and uh, Tencent's best hand in entering the financial sector and beating the traditional pair is a bit shaky now. Whereas uh, Pingan's mode is still undisputed and ever growing. There is also a chance that uh, Pingan Bank could become one of the banks managing the ERMB, whereas uh, it is for the trials is just being managed by the four big uh, state-owned banks. To summarize, Pingan has a very strong base and they have proven to sh uh, use technology very effectively to generate new businesses and also to attract new clients. They have also uh, shown a very good growth in the past and the future looks bright with a stable growth. This is not a stock for quick gains, but uh, good long-term returns, something that suits my investment strategy. But still, we would like to enter a position when it's at a fair value, if not at a discount. For that, we need to figure out the fair value. So let's move on to the valuation. To value an insurance company, we usually look at the embedded value, which is like uh, the present value of all the future profits, plus the net asset value of the firm. Uh, for Pingan, this is around 89 to 99 Hong Kong dollars. But since Pingan is more than an insurance company, uh, there should be a premium to it. So this time, let me show you another way I come up with uh, the fair value of a company. In this method, I compare the company's uh, stock price uh, to its earnings per share, EPS, historically. So the concept behind it is that uh, in ideal terms, the company's uh, 
stock price should increase in perfect correlation to its earnings per share uh and yeah so like we business is about making profits right if it's making more profit than the year before it should be valued more than the year before if it's making less profit now they should be valued less so uh but there's an assumption that there's no change in the expected uh growth in the future year so if the growth expectation increases then obviously there should be a premium to the company uh and uh, this also creates inefficiencies which we can benefit from or lose out to but anyways for uh, this kind of method i used three year to five year charts and uh uh, I use Capital IQ for this. This account is supposed to be paid, but uh, it's under my school, so it's free for me. You guys can use FastGraph, which is also paid, but it's reasonably priced. I couldn't find anything that uh, could do it for free, but if you guys watching this know any of such uh, platform where everybody can just do it, this kind of analysis for free, just uh, put it down in the comments below for everybody's benefit. Uh, if not, let's just uh, dig in. I will change the screen to the to this one. All right, guys, so this is the chart over here uh, and the orange line is the earnings per share. The blue line is the stock price. So I'm using the 10 years chart over here just to prove my concept first and then we'll move on to the three year chart. And as you guys can see, right, uh, the stock price is correlated with the earnings per share, not a surprise. But uh, according to the concept now, uh, if the uh, price is below the earnings per share line, that means it's undervalued. And if it's above the earnings per share line, it is overvalued. So as you guys can see, if it goes way overvalued, right, it, it drops in price to go back to the earnings, uh, the, like the fair value of the company. And then, yeah, you can see if it's uh, below, like over here, if it's below, then it will go rise up to meet the earnings per share line. So yeah, that's what happens. And this is where the uh, COVID stuff happened. So it's a bit disconnected now. So accordingly, if we can uh, see the three years chart and over here, we can see that the earnings per share is above uh, and the stock price is currently below. And uh, from here, we can find the fair value. So the fair value of the company should be over here, right? And uh, on the left hand side, we have the access for the uh, stock price so if we can just backtrack uh it's somewhere over here which is about 108 hong kong dollars so that would be the fair value it's simple as that so pingan is currently trading at 94.6 hong kong dollars and our basic analysis says that the fair value is at 108 hong kong dollars if you do the basic maths and uh, you'll figure out that the uh it's currently trading at a discount of 12.4 uh, percent I personally hold one lot of the company that is 500 shares at an average price of 98 Hong Kong dollars. It's really a big lot, like 500 shares at 98 Hong Kong dollars. It was about eight, uh, $8,000 for me. Anyways, that's all for today's video. Uh, I hope you found something valuable in here and uh, help me by just clicking the like button and subscribing if you you have. And actually, thank you for just sticking to the end. It's, it's a long video anyways, right? And I believe uh, by seeing this, I'm just dragging it even further. But anyways, like always, just uh, stay tuned for the next video. And until then, ciao.